Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Account, and welcome back to the channel. Guys, we finally got the Evo that we were waiting to see released, the Kyle Walker Evo, also known as the Keeping Balance Evo now, right? But hours after it was released, we learned of a new version of Winter Wildcards Kyle Walker that's going to be coming soon. EA has got some jokes, so we're going to talk about that Evo today and what that means for potentially doing his evolution and we actually had some good SBC content yesterday with the crafting objective and upgrade the Luis Hernandez SBC we got to cover that and of course hope that it continues today with a Kai Havertz SBC once again we know the SBCs EA told them all to us so we're going to talk about those today in the video if you're excited for it drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new let's go over yesterday's content and start with that great SBC the brand new icon striker Luis Hernandez which we knew was coming of course by the way yesterday I put out a tweet I said who should I start Hullet or Zidane and I fell into the trap I guess you could say I haven't used Hullet in a long time in Ultimate Team, so I'm going for the Hullet. It's overpriced, I know. It was not what I was wanting to do yesterday, but comparative to Zidane, he fits my team better, and I think I will enjoy this card in the longer run. And technically, based off his stats, maybe evolvable before Zidane would be... You know, that's a long way down the line, but I did start with the Hullet SBC. It's going to take me a while to get him done. But this is the SBC at hand from yesterday, and it's actually insanely easy to do. If you want to try him out on loan first, it's only a 79 rated squad, but 83, 84, and 85 rated squads, plus the bronze and silver, to get this Luis Hernandez with Trivella Plus. Four-star, four-star upgrade as well. 91 attack positioning, 91 finishing, really good dribbling stats, a uh, lot of traits, right? Technical, rapid, first touch, aerial power header as well. Bit of a shorter guy, five foot nine, but he's got those aerial and power header traits. And then, of course, the Trivella Plus. So, very interesting card, and especially for the price, it's more like just a fun Winter Wild Cards SBC. And it feels like that is the spirit of Winter Wild Cards. So, GG's EA, thank you. This is a W. We appreciate that SBC. Keep that trend going for what is going to be coming out today. Now, also yesterday, we had the return of yet another upgrade pack, a times three repeatable per day, the 85 plus player pick. And we like this because it is cheap. It's an 84 rated squad. And guys, actually, some SBC fodder went up a little bit yesterday. 84s actually moved just a little bit. Not a lot, but just enough because this 85 plus player pick was released. And uh, it's fun to do. So if you have extra 84s from the 84 times 10s, if you're opening those in the store, which EA keep running those 84 times 10 lightning rounds even again. Uh, yesterday on Saturday, it was crazy. Or yesterday, yeah. Like that's, it's just crazy with those lightning rounds. They continue to run those. And they're supplying the market a lot. But that SBC did make 84s go up a little bit. Now, let's talk some more about upgrades, challenge SBCs. We had the refresh, like we mentioned in yesterday's video. The refresh of the premium mixed and the mixed league upgrades. And it's actually almost exactly the same. These are out for 118 days, which is crazy. But they're almost exactly the same as the SBCs that just went away. I think like one of the only differences is like they're requiring less players from the same club for like League 1 and Eredivisie. Uh, but a lot of this has stayed the exact same, and I think it's pretty downvoted on Footbin because of that. It's just because it was nothing better, I guess, and it looks like, of course, locked in for 118 days. This is out for a long time. These are going to be the league SBCs that we have, so they're not making them really that much better because that is a very, very long time, so people are not super happy about that, but the upgrade SBC that we are happy about is the Winter Wild Cards Crafting Upgrade. I guess you could say happy about it, right? Because right now, this is the SBC you can rinse your gold players into. All it requires is 11 golds. It's like almost all of the other crafting objectives and SBCs that we have had so far this year. It is easy to get done, and the rewards that you get as a part of it 10, 15, 20, all the way up to 150 completions. It is a lot, but the packs are decent, right? Now, I will say there's a lot of kits and kind of some TFOs and stuff in here as well that I'm like, eh, I'd rather just have packs. Uh, but if you want to go over this and you want to get all these packs done, 81 times 11, some player picks, 83, 10, another 83, 10 at the very end, and then an 83, 20 for completing it all. It is out for the rest of the entire season, so you've technically got 32 days to get it done. But that is a lot of those upgrade packs. Maybe just do as many as you can. I would expect to see more upgrade packs coming out on Monday, right? As we get like player picks and stuff like that. So maybe do a few of those, but it's not like a must do complete the whole entire thing. I would not try to send your full entire club to get all the 150 of those done. That will just take a long time. Now let's talk about the big content that we're here to talk about. 
the evolutions, right? Yesterday, we had the release of the Keeping Balance Evolution. It was the Kyle Walker Evo, right? As it was called, everybody was super, super excited for this evolution. And we finally got it. And it was exactly as leaked. They didn't change anything, right? We were, were a little bit worried about the Rashford situation that happened before, right? But they didn't change anything. 75,000 coins to do. It's a 50-50 objective or uh, evolution, as you can see, people kind of um, voting on it and stuff. There are some pretty good cards that you can get from this. But of course, the A1 number one choice that a lot of people are doing is Kyle Walker. It allows you to evolve a very meta player and a very good player. Now, for me, this is one that was a no-brainer as well because I have this card untradeable. So it was like, I really like his right back card and this is a nice upgrade for him. So I put it straight into the evolution literally right away, right? My first owner Walker is going to be completed and we're going to have ourselves an 87 rated Walker with the nice boost, right? The playstyle plus is one that I like. This is one of the first playstyle pluses that they have given out that actually gives something decent right quick step plus is really solid plus eight agility again plus eight balance is a part of the card as well one of the things that kyle walker was struggling with was dribbling right he's got the pace he's got the defending is the dribbling is the problem for his card and this evolution boosts it very nicely he is 100 the most popular card that is a part of this evolution but the thing that i like about it is once again They've dropped it twice. This Evo could also be very, very good if you're using a chain sort of Evo and you're trying to put in a lower rated player inside of this, maybe a silver or a bronze that you're going to be putting on a path to Evo up at some rate. This could be a really nice Evo that fits in at the end of that chain, potentially, because it has a little bit higher rated requirements and it gives out a play style plus in a quick step that is really good. Now, I will say, if, as you look at this Evo on Footbin and you look at some of the cards that show in it and a part of it, some of these, like, don't, do they really benefit with the Quick Step Plus playstyle? That's the only thing that I would tell you is, as you're looking through some of these Evo cards, make sure you're putting somebody in who benefits, right? This Jordan Henderson card is up a lot because people are putting him in. Yes, he gets a nice pace boost, but is that the playstyle plus you really want a midfield Jordan Henderson to have? Just kind of think about that as you're going through his Evo. Um, that's one thing that I would keep in mind because I, I do believe that some of these look kind of mid with with uh, with that playstyle plus. Now, for this Zapata, that's a pretty sick Evo. Goes to five-star weak foot. I guess you would have had to do his Founders Evolution all along, and you can't do Founders 2 to fit into the Keeping Balance. So that one actually probably most people can't do. And that's one thing I will say as I look through Footbin and see a lot of these Evos. Dumfries looks pretty cool. You can put him in triple threat wing back. Uh, which is that still available? That might have gone away. That might actually have expired. So triple threat wing back. This might not even be possible anymore, unfortunately. That looks like a pretty crazy dumb freeze. Better than the one that's actually in packs right now. But it looks like it's not going to be evoable. That's the kind of the weird part about this is, is you look through a lot of these popular cards in Footbin. A lot of them don't actually work. But Rabio does. Rabio goes to Hulligang with his keeping balance Evo, which is cool. So overall, it is a nice Evo, right? I'm going to say it's nice. And once again, you also get that cool car design of the Winter Wild Cards Evo design, which I'm a big fan of. Now, here's what made things interesting. Yesterday, of course, as expected, the Kyle Walker is the most popular one, and it's making player prices drop a lot. Right backs everywhere, down bad. Cancelo, 156, down to 117K that he is right now. The team of the group stage, Cancelo, is down at 290K from being 350. I mean, we could look at a number of examples of right backs that are down bad. Dodo from 130,000 coins to 86k and he's still dropping now one thing i will say is with so much hype being on kyle walker and this impacting the market so much keep an eye on some of these right backs that have gotten absolutely destroyed a lot of these cards are still meta and a lot of these cards after the dust settles will probably rebound back up especially other leagues like non-prem right backs right maybe that Mazrawi. Klaus is another one. His team, the group stage, and his Europa League card both dropped down a ton. Like this one actually just rebounded 30K, it looks like. Klaus went from 240 all the way down to 180 and is now back to 210. There could be some bounce backs. There might be some more panic today on still some of those right back cards, but definitely keep an eye out for those. They could be a good place to trade. Right back is a place in this game where I feel like we have a lot of left backs, maybe not as many right backs. So that's something that I put some coins into. 
is watching some of those right backs and the big time panic sales that we had yesterday and some potential bounce backs, probably not for a couple of days, but in the next couple of days, that could be a part of the market that you watch, especially if we have big content today that could make some other prices drop here even further and create a buy opportunity as everybody's been panic selling those when the dust settles they'll rebound back up. Focus on rare, focus on popular, focus on meta, the top three things we always talk about when investing in cards. Now, here's where EA has the jokes, all right? Because literally not even, what, three hours after this evolution dropped where basically everybody is doing Kyle Walker, right? Myself included. All of a sudden, we have a leak that Kyle Walker is getting a promo card in Winter Wild Cards. Now, we have some more leaks, and we're gonna take a look at them in this video. Of course, Winter Wild Cards Team 2 sounds like it might even be coming out as early as Monday. That's kind of the rumor, but this is not the first time EA has done this, guys. If you remember earlier on in the year, we had a Kyle, or we had a, not a Kyle Walker, he just got dropped, right? We had an N'Golo Conte that we could evolve, and then we got a promo card for N'Golo Conte right after that. There's many other examples that has happened in that same situation. It's just kind of frustrating, right? Because you're like, yo, I'm going to go evil this card, and it's going to be absolutely insane looking when I get this evolution done, and it's going to be something that's better than what's on the market and all that. And you think you're hot stuff, and you think you're sweet for choosing this evolution, whether it's a meta card or whether it's not. And then EA goes and does something like this. It seems like they're always doing It's like a joke that they have, right? I mean, I can't think of too many examples right now where this has happened besides the Conte, but I know for a fact there have been so many people this year that have done an evolution, maybe for Cancelo. I know that's happened a couple of times. I think Bernardo Silva as well in that same toughen up for Conte, right? You compare Conte to this toughen up and then to the his uh, his card in the market. This is actually a, like a good situation. If you did the toughen up Conte, it was a free Evo, right? And this Conte was so expensive, right? It was like a million coins before he got re-released into packs. So you were like, oh yeah, I, I win here. I did the Evo. It's not that much different than than the, the radioactive. So it's like, I win. Will that be the same situation with Kyle Walker? Probably. Kyle Walker promo cards are always expensive. And honestly, I would hope that they would give him a little bit bigger of a boost than just going up from 84 to 87. He's probably going to have a different play style uh, plus as well whenever they drop this promo card. And also, guys, it could be, as Kyle Walker is extinct on the market now because everybody is doing this evolution, the, the Kyle Walker card, could actually be a different position, right? As, of course, tweeted here, center back question mark. They've dropped center back position change Kyle Walker's before. This promo does include some position changes, so that would maybe also bring a whole different twist to this scenario, but it's just kind of frustrating, right? Uh, that's This is why, again, evolving like emotional players and, and not always going for the most meta option in Evos, I think is the best way to go about it. Like, I'm going for this Ragoni here. He's very unlikely to get a promo card throughout the rest of the year. Maybe a small chance, right? But very unlikely. Kyle Walker, it's likely he gets an Evo card, and I did, did this one right away, and I don't regret it because this is a right back that is, I am going to use in my team for a really long time. But, again, the same thing has to be said. If they drop a promo card right afterwards, it is a little bit disappointing, and it feels like, especially recently, that's happened multiple times. So that's kind of like, you know... The EA has jokes situation from yesterday. It was crazy that everybody was going and doing Kyle Walker. Right backs are dropping, and then there's a leak for another Kyle Walker that could be coming out or will be coming out here pretty soon. Now, the last thing from yesterday's content that really was interesting, at least, was the mini release. As expected, it dropped early. We said that in yesterday's video, and it did end up happening. Dumfries, this is a sick card for discard price, well, his, his price range is at 15K, so it's not entirely discard. They need to lower that price range. But for 15K, a Dumfries card with Whipped Pass Plus, uh, he's always one of the better right backs in Serie A. 90 physical as well, 80 defense, good passing and dribbling stats. I know he's three star, three star, but he's got block, rapid, quick step, and long throw. That is a nuts card for that crazy of a price. Uh, so GG's EA for releasing a pretty nice Dumfries as a part of the re uh, mini release. And then Ryan Kent, this one's got everybody really, really interested here. He actually was really good to trade with yesterday, but the hype with this card is the 99 dribbling, which is really nuts. Of course, he's got the four star skills, the five star weak foot. He's got technical power shot, quick step and flare plus flare plus is a little bit of a waste in my opinion, at least imagine if they would have given him technical plus with 99 across the board dribbling. I mean, I don't think it's actually 99 across the board. He's got 95 reactions and 93 composure, but 99 everywhere else. 
I can only imagine how crazy that left stick is with this Kent card. I actually was able to trade with him yesterday when he was released in packs. He dipped down to like, what was it, like just under 60K. And then he ended up going back to like 80,000 coins. I sold too early. I bought a couple at like 55, 56 and sold them at like 70K. But here he is again down to 55,000 coins. And a lot of people are going to want to try this card out just because the hype of the 99 dribbling Ryan Kent in his own right is a very overpowered player. And I can imagine that card is pretty insane. So watch out for that one. That one's going to be one that fluctuates on the market a decent amount. Just be careful with his minimum price. Again, same thing with Dumfries, right? He's at min price right now. Kent is close. Um, Berardi is not, but Berardi's card looks pretty solid. Four-star, four-star with a dead ball plus trade. Serie A teams, again, getting a couple good cards here recently. That is a good-looking item with 88 pace, 89 shooting, 88 passing, 91 dribbling. Really, really good stats there for him. And then we also had Isak, who is minimum price. This is probably the top one budget Prem striker that's going to be in this game. For less than 30K, you can get an Isak card, 4-star, 5-star, with Trivella Plus. What's up with Trivella Plus recently? Like the Hernandez, the Isak, the Wahi that's in objectives. A lot of Trebella Plus going on here in this game, but that is a nice card. Of course, he is always meta and always looked at. I would wait for EA to update this minimum price range on Isak, and I know he's not a crazy-looking card, but if you're just getting the game over the holidays for the first time, that is a pretty crazy striker card to be starting out with in your team for that sort of a price. Now, also, we go to the store. We talk about this for a second. EA's been dropping the lightning rounds. They've continually had them. It's the 84 tens and the 86 doubles, guys. They're out, like, almost all the time and the pack weight again still is pretty crazy a lot of people are doing these 84 times 10s uh now they also did drop yesterday um i completely forgot to mention this in yesterday's video actually the 10 and 30 coin packs always a w goes without saying i packed Eze and a kimmich from a 10 coin pack yesterday that was pretty nuts but they dropped a 550,000 coin 2023 historical encore pack this isn't even where's where's the crazy one I can't believe that this one is only 500,000 coins. This is the massive one that includes three Winter Wildcard players rated 86 or above, 20 rare golds, 85 or higher. That is a crazy, crazy pack, and it's only 500,000 coins. The Elite Wildcards Guarantee Pack. I think there's still one more. Isn't there like that Ultra Wildcards or there's an Ultra something pack? So I think there's still maybe another store pack that could be counted out this weekend. But we have three packs right now. 500, 500, and 550,000 coins. That is crazy. That is crazy the amount of store packs that we have there. But they're going to keep coming, guys. EA is going to keep burning those lightning rounds. And like we mentioned, those 84 tens keep getting released. And that is really supplying the middle tier of the market on fodder. Let's talk market and let's talk fodder for a bit, right? 84s technically did go up a little bit yesterday because of the 85 plus player pick, but they're still getting packed so much. They were like 1.4, 1.5K, almost discard. Some of them are up at 1.8 to 1.9, but like 85s are at 3.7K, 86s are at 7,000 coins. 87s are uh, below 12. It's crazy how much those 84 tens keep supplying that middle of the little tier in the fodder market. I think that's also keeping the 88 rateds in check. These cards are about 20,000 coins still. And I think without those lightning rounds yesterday, I mean, look, they went to 22K and then went back down to 19. I think they would still be 22K if we weren't getting all those 84 times 10 lightning rounds that a lot of people are opening. The only part of the fodder market that's doing good is the 90s and even some of the 91s, but specifically the 90s. I mean, these were all 53, 54,000 coins, and now they are 57K. You could tell they're just skyrocketing as more people are opening packs and doing SPCs like the Mbappe, like the Hullet, like the Zidane, all those high-rated squads that are out there. That is the part of the market to be probably on bids for. You could probably get on some bids for 90 rated, win them at 50K with all the supply that we have. Uh, maybe at the late hours, late night hours, or just times on the market where nobody else is grinding or looking at those bids. And you can get some good flips there. I would still watch bids on 87s and above, 88s, 89s specifically. That's the part of the fodder market that seems to move the most with all the SBCs that we have right now. And a quick shout for Team of the Weeks. They didn't really move too much. There's still like, what, 33, 34,000 coins. Um, there is maybe, maybe some potential for this stuff to move today. We'll talk about that here in just a second. But I want to cover the meta market too and talk about, of course, the winter wild cards cards because a lot of these continue to drop off as expected. Dybala was um, somebody who I, I lost a little bit of coins on. A lot of 
tax losses on this Dybala card. He just does not seem to want to move up in price. He dropped off over 100,000 coins yesterday. Big drop off for him. Big drop off for Llorente. He went from like 300,000 coins to 200k. He's back up a little bit. Grimaldo is down bad. Balde, Fernando, uh, Enzo Fernandez down bad as well. Um, you know, Rafinha is down bad. A lot of the, the middle of the low tier dropped a ton yesterday just because of the supply like that is normal and that does happen keep an eye on these cards though they're going to continue to fluctuate they are decently rare and like i mentioned there is potential content coming today that could move some of those prices and the, the rest of the market in total guys let's talk about sunday icon packs right remember last sunday we were disappointed we didn't have the icon pack we had the 86 plus hero and we were just sad right because we was like hey this new 87 plus icon pack is in the code where is it? Can it drop on the game? And maybe today is that day. And if you're like, Nate, what pack are you talking about? It's the same pack that is at level 35 in the season. At least one of the choices at level 35. It is the 87 plus base Centurions or Thunderstruck Icon pack. This could be a pack that also comes as an SBC. They could do the 87 plus base or Centurions again. Or guys, I'm going to throw this out there because this is a big promo. And we started to have some player picks recently, specifically with the heroes. Could this be the first day that we get an icon player pick? It would definitely only be a base icon player pick. And maybe they would even do a max rating on the player pick. I hope not. But a base icon player pick or the 87 plus base centuries is definitely possible for a pack today. I really hope that they don't release a hero player pick. Like, no, we don't want that. I mean, sure, you can release that, but also release an icon pack too. The icon packs have a lot of lot more hype, in my opinion, than the hero picks do. And of course, if we get an icon pack today, that is going to be a very craftable icon pack with the 83 times 10 that is out, the ways to get fodder like a 83 plus team of the week player pick, as I'm sure a lot of people will be rinsing into that to get informs if it's required for an icon pack. That would be a pack that would really make some prices move on the market. Now, how would you invest for that again, right? You talk about investing TFA. Where should I be putting my coins? An icon pack, regardless of what it is, unless it's like a max rating icon pick, like an 88, max 88 pick would probably not go over too well. I don't think they would do that. I think it's going to be a decent icon pack if we get one or the pick. I would say 87s, 88s, 89s. Like, guys, I know that the 86s are really, really low. And hey, maybe they do move a little bit today. They could go up. Who knows? Maybe they go back to like 8,000 coins, like up a thousand a card, but it would have to be a crazy SBC and specifically require some of those ratings to really make those cards move the most, especially with the 8410 lightning rounds, the 86 plus lightning rounds that we get that supply those cards so much. I really think I'd look at the 88s if I was going to do a fodder investment and still a club stock is not a bad shout at this stage of the weekend with fodder still being so low, more SBCs coming, an icon pack could make some fodder move today, but Remember what happened during Black Friday? Fodder didn't move that much. The only fodder that really moved were Team of the Weeks. And that would be kind of what you have to hope for today is that if there's going to be a place to invest, it would be Team of the Weeks because those have the greatest amount of risk because they're expensive and inflated, but they're also the greatest amount of reward. Like if we get an icon pack today that requires a Team of the Week in both squads like what happened a couple weeks ago, Team of the Weeks are going to go to like 39, 40,000 coins and they're going to be inflated even with the Team of the Week player pick being out. They will go up a lot. So that's, if you want to risk it, a place that you could see some prices move today if, again, if informs are required and if it's a great icon pack. But I do expect some sort of icon pack today. And of course, we know our player SBC. It is Kai Havertz. We are going to be getting another Arsenal player SBC today. We had the Martinelli. We had the Hullet. We had the Luis Hernandez. And now we're going Arsenal once again with Kai Havertz. Will they position change him? Will they keep him as a center attacking mid, right wing, or striker? This could be a good card, right? He's four-star, four-star, left-footed. They need to upgrade the work rates. High medium would be fantastic. We got to get away from that medium. Medium. He's got good traits. Finesse, technical, Trivella, first touch, and chip shot. Maybe they'll add a play style plus to his card, which they hopefully would. And it's going to be really interesting to see what that SBC brings us today. We had a good one yesterday with Luis Hernandez. Continued the good trend EA. So watch some of your Arsenal links. Of course, maybe it's Saka, a card of his. Maybe it's Zinchenko. A lot of people are watching this card uh, as a link to the potential Havertz that would be coming today. So definitely keep an eye on that part of the market, your Arsenal links. If the SBC is good, 
those could appreciate in value a little bit over the next day or two. It's all going to depend on the card and how good it looks, of course, to see where those prices move. So that's kind of the content that I'm expecting today. Of course, the refresh of the 83 times 10 and all that good stuff. Um, all the SBCs that are refreshing right now every single day are going to refresh. Make sure you're doing your daily SBCs. I got those done. I think today is a part of the daily objective. We're getting a pack. Once again, let me check the live here and let's go winter wild cards. Com daily login completionist. Day four is going to be a lone player pick and an 80 times five. All right, that's not bad, I guess, because you get some more 81s and 82s that you can put into the 83 times 10 for that craft. Now, last thing I want to look at today are some leaks. These are more players that have been leaked for what we think will be Team 2 or a mini release or some other extra release of Winter Wild Cards. Coming out on Christmas Day tomorrow is the rumor. We will see. But Nkungu has been leaked. Talking about another Evo card that a lot of people did. Looking like he's getting a promo card. That's nice, especially as he's back to fitness and playing IRL for Chelsea. Promo card for him could be very, very nice. Also, we've got a Doku. Very Prem heavy, right? Doku, Kai Walker, and Nkungu. A lot of leaks there. A lot of leaks for the Prem. Very pacey card. Card a lot of people used earlier on this year with multiple versions of an inform. And then we do have some more icons that have been leaked. Butragueno, of course, we've we've heard about that. Stoichkov, Barnes, Rikelme, and Hierro. So, along with the other icons like Raul that we're still asking questions about, where's Hugo Sanchez, we have more icon players that have been leaked, which probably means these are in packs. Of course, they're not on the SBC list, so we probably think those would be in packs as well. And the only question I would have is, what position changes they're going to do for these icons? Because a lot of the icons have been getting position changes, so we will just have to see. Best of luck if you're rocking, of course, all the 10 coin pack, 30 coin packs, 83 times 10s, and um, and yeah, or if you're rocking lightning rounds, good luck to you as well. Um, and if you're rocking the 83 times 10, I, I hope you guys get some good pulls in that. At the moment for me, it's 83 10s, daily upgrades, and uh, crafting into Hullet, and maybe an Icon SBC today. We will have to see. Also, watch out for more Evos. We still have Evos that are leaked. Might be getting an Evo like every single day to start this promo, or at least today, tomorrow, the biggest days of Winter Wild Cards. Might be getting new Evos today as well. Had to rock the hat, of course, because it is Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas to all of you guys who do celebrate. We will have a video tomorrow, of course, but I will not be streaming for the next couple of days still, um, of course, because of the holiday. But hope you guys are all staying safe, staying healthy. And uh, if yeah, if you enjoyed this video today, drop a thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions. And subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys in the video tomorrow. It's been Nathan for the Catch you guys there. Peace out.